Welcome to UCW TV. Josh Damien along some random guy they picked up from the audience, I'm pretty sure. Hello, everybody. This is MK, and I'm glad to be here. Oh, that's cute. You gave yourself a name. That's awesome. Well, MK, as he's calling himself, is apparently here to replace Paco. Paco, earlier tonight, made an announcement that he is going to start training again, make his return to the ring. But right now, we've got uh, the American Pit Bulls, and it looks like uh, Captain Craig Stevens just came back from his first day at his internship. It looks amazing to see these guys in their normal street gear, shows that they're regular people. And uh, I'll tell you what, this crowd sure loves them. I tell you what, though, fashion sense is completely out the door with these two. I don't care if they have championship gold or not. You know, someone needs to hire a fashion consultant because, oh, my gosh. Well, that's what I love about these guys, though, is they don't care about fashion. All they care about is winning. <laughs> you, you know, you're right. They'd be the champions of the juniors division. Wow, this crowd is hot tonight. Craig showing he's blind. So, we're going to get straight down to business. Because right now, let me take you on a little trip. About six months ago, Jason Jackson and myself won these tag team titles. We have been defending them against anyone and everyone. We cut a promo and we said it like it was. You want a shot at these belts? All you gotta do is walk through that locker room. I'll walk through it! That's all you gotta do. We beat everybody from California to two people that we've beaten before that are in the back tonight. And boys, I think I've forgotten what you've done to me. You're sadly mistaken. But guess what? Your time's gonna come, just not tonight. The reason why I'm out here is because for the last two weeks, I know Jason Jackson's had it, I've had it. Everybody wants to know if we're scared of Mark Casals and Derek Tunetti. You know what? Here's the thing. How many of you want to see a rematch between the American Pitbulls and the Super Team? Alright, that's easy. Done. Because we are fighting champions. And here's the thing. We are the UC's must-sees for a reason. We are the standard of wrestling. Everybody that wants to be a tag team, everybody that wants to wrestle, comes in here and they look up to that man and to me. So tonight, boys, it's two out of three falls because one fall just isn't going to do it to end this. We are truly going to see who is the best tag team. We'll just see. So boys, get ready because your standard has just been raised. Well, clearly someone's going to lose their job for allowing Craig Stevens to have mic time. But Craig Stevens making a statement here tonight. We're going to see what happens later on in tonight's main event. Hopefully they'll get a change of clothes or something like that because that's just horrendous. Good job. Well, I think they're going to change their clothes, but they're going to come out to kick butt. I think they're very good. I think that uh, they said it like it was and they don't run from anybody. BR Ultra Championship Wrestling Zero, Utah's best live pro wrestling action in Salt Lake City, Utah at the UCW Training Center, 47 South Orange Street. Tickets are $10 for general admission and $3 for kids 6 and under. Doors open at 6 p.m. and bell time is 6.30 p.m. For more information, go to www.ucw-0.com or call 801-699-7977. And remember, do not try this at home. We are trained professionals. Leave it to us. We are Ultra Championship Wrestling Zero. Motivational pain.
And Dante Acosta, one of the young and up-and-comers here, former cruiserweight champion. He was the first cruiserweight champion here in UCW. And then uh, when the when the UCW management decided to get rid of the cruiserweight title, he had a chance at the Ultra X. Not been so fortunate, unfortunately. I think Dante is the hardest worker of the young talent we have here at UCW. Um, I think he's a budding superstar. I'm real excited to see him uh, in this match tonight. Today's your first day, right? Yes. I was just trying to figure out how you got that opinion, that's all. <laughs> well, here we go now. Dylan Griffin, one half of the Sin City Fury, taking on Dante Acosta. This is going to be a good matchup, and the reason why is because these are two high flyers who also have some technical wrestling ability, and that's what I like to see in this contest. Well, Dante is an accomplished amateur wrestler. As most of these guys get started, that's where he started. Now, here we go. This is the exactly what I was talking about. That's how you got started, right? They you were an amateur wrestler. No, I was an amateur and professional boxer. Oh, well, that's, that's, that's one way to go about things. <laughs> but see, this is what I'm saying. They're turning it into a show and taking it away from wrestling. And, oh, and Dylan trying to go for a lockup there, but it looks like they ended up just getting into a series of strikes. Look at this. Whoa! Oh, reversing the hip toss. Oh, and a oh, big an arm drag. drag. Right into the ropes as well. Oh, geez, big clothesline. Look at this, a drop kick as well from Dante Acosta. This is just some good stuff right here. These guys are going to create some fire right here. I'll tell you what, he's putting them together in bunches. And, and I'll tell you what, Dylan had no other choice than to basically do what he could do to call the timeout in wrestling. There are no timeouts in wrestling. Oh, look at oh, this. Oh, my goodness. That's what we're talking about, the high flying over the top. Amazing. This is a sold out capacity crowd. They actually had to add chairs in for this uh, show. That's why they're so close to the ring right there. Uh -oh. oh, and see, this is ridiculous. Why doesn't the referee turn around and see these? Oh, that was terrible. I tell you what, this is just great strategy right here by the Sin City Fury. Suede is a perfect example of a good friend. He's there for his good friend, Dylan. This is just great stuff right there. Great strategy by these guys. You know, as always in anything in life, when you can't do things the right way, you have to cheat. And that's what we were seeing there. You know and what? He's, he's choking right now. This is ridiculous. Listen, there's a right way and a wrong way. It's just that the right way happens to be the way that you look at things, and the wrong way is the way that anyone else looks at it. So for them, that's the right way. I understand what you're saying, but I don't have to like it. Yeah, you, that, that's your right as an American, sir. Here we go now. Oh, big bulldog right there by Dylan. Dylan's got to go for the pin here to take out Dante Acosta. He's only going to be able to get a two count. After all that, Dante was able to kick out. That's a testament to his training and his endurance. Oh, big kick right there. You know, Dante was actually out for a little while with a concussion, but he's been able to bounce back away from those concussion-like symptoms and able to get back in the ring. And I will salute him for that, even though I, oh, jeez. Oh, my goodness. You know what, I still think Dylan's going to win this match. A minor setback is nothing to him. You know, that was an amazing feat of strength. You, and also using your opponent's momentum against you against them to their to your advantage. You know, it's kind of like I learned in uh, in baseball when I was a kid. Whoa, that was beautiful right there. Uh, this entire thing, it's 90% mental. It's only 10% physical. Every, this is a mind game is what this is. It sure is. You have to be mentally tough and physically tough. Oh, and look at this right now. Dylan taking advantage of the ropes right there. And Suede is posing for pictures. They're only $5 a piece, ladies and gentlemen. He'll sign them, too, but that's just for an extra 10. Well, from the reaction of the crowd, I don't think he'll be selling many of those. Oh, you never know. I mean, you know, some people are just in shock and awe. That's all it is. See, and once again, here we go. Dylan calls himself Mr. Do Good, but he's not doing any good. Hey, you know what? That little girl was clearly out of line. That's just terrible. Well, and is it Dante fighting back here? You know, they're not called the Sin City Fury because they're nice. There you go. You know, sometimes your, your biggest alley is the elements of the ring. Uh-oh. Dylan's going top rope. And right in front of us. I don't see. Oh. What a smart man. Smart move. Smart move, Dylan. Good job. That may smart have been move. the smart move, but he sure chickened out. Hey, I actually like you, all right? 
Boy, I thought oh. we were going to have to uh, run for our lives right there. Yeah. I thought, oh, oh man. Right in front of our announcer. Oh, jeez. Dylan on the concrete. Now, some federations have padding. This Here, man is a guest. This man is a guest. You apologize. Here at UCW Zero, we do not have any pads. Hey, they didn't just travel 10 miles to get beat up like this. That Dante owes him an apology. I don't think he needs to apologize for anything. Look at this now. Dante with strikes to Dylan. I think Dylan might be out of it after that shot to the concrete. I agree. Uh-oh. Look at this now. Uh-oh. What do we got here? Dante able to counter. Kick to the midsection. Oh, look at this. Oh, oh my, my gosh. goodness. That was simply amazing. Oh, look at that oh, beautiful. Man. See, now that is amazing. That is. Listen. Slay Thompson interfering. There we go. Well, that's just not right. See, when you interfere, that's what you're going to get. I think, you know what? That's just unfair because, quite frankly, Swade was just looking out for his friend. Uh oh, here we go. Look at this. Dylan. Dylan's got uh -oh. this. Oh, big power bomb. Yep. Top you know, row. He's going for the big move, the high risk move. Let's see if he can pull it off. This is going to be big. I think he's taking too much time. I think he's taking too much time. See? Oh. He was taking too much time. If he would have been more of an athlete, less of a showman. Dylan is in a vulnerable state right now. No, 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 no. Come on. Here we go. Looks like it's the finish. Uh, is Dante doing a 10 punch? He's basically got to the count of five to do whatever he wants. Oh, oh no. Great move by and Dylan stops, right there. He stops the Hurricane Rada. And now we see what he's got. Beautiful. Look at this. It's a pin attempt right here. Uh oh. Dante. Oh, he Wait a minute. No. No way. And Dante used oh, his on. wrestling ability. You were talking about mental. He used that. He won the match. Why are An these? An incredible win. Over. That, it was just an incredible win. That was just Dylan cheap. May, you know what? I'll tell you something. Dylan may be, think he's better than Utah, but he's not better than Dante Acosta. Oh, come on. You got to be kidding me. Dylan had that match in the bag. That was a beautiful powerbomb right there from Dylan. I could, I can't believe it. Well, Dante Acosta is your winner. I. Oh, my gosh. I just I can't. You know what? We're going to take a quick commercial break. I'm going to go vomit. We'll be right back. BR Ultra Championship Wrestling Zero, Utah's best live pro wrestling action in Salt Lake City, Utah, at the UCW Training Center, 47 South Orange Street. Tickets are $10 for general admission and $3 for kids 6 and under. Doors open at 6 p.m. and bell time is 6.30 p.m. For more information, go to www.ucw-0.com or call 801-699-7977. And remember, do not try this at home. We are trained professionals. Leave it to us. We are Ultra Championship Wrestling Zero. Motivational pain. We are back here on UCW TV. The tag team of Bronson and Guerrero Azteca coming out here to the ring. You know, MK, I know you weren't here, so let me give you a little bit of history. It was it was two weeks ago, I believe, that there was a pick your poison match involving uh, Bronson and Kid Cade, where Kid Cade uh, was had his poison picked by Bronson, and Bronson picked Guerrero Azteca. What ended up happening was that last week. Bronson got his poison picked by Kid Cade, and Kid Cade actually picked uh, Manny Money Fresh. And tonight, we're going to see those teams in tag team action here with Bronson teaming up against Guerrero Az or excuse me, not against, with Guerrero Azteca against Kid Cade and Manny Money Fresh. What an unusual tag match. You've got a, a young, young kid uh, with Guerrero Azteca. Now, I understand that uh, Guerrero is the first UCW Mexican uh, he's the first UCW heavyweight champion that was Mexican. Yeah, you know, uh, that that's correct. Yeah, and shortly after that, it was followed up by uh, Los Mojipaco. That is correct. So, and then, of course, uh, you know, Guerrero has been around for some time. But, you know, I think, if anything, Bronson traded up because Bronson used to be a uh, tag team partner with Kid K. 
So if anything, he just he just teamed up right there. The UCW Zero superhero, Kid Kate, alongside Manny Money Fresh. And I'll tell you what, these guys got to get their colors coordinated because it looks like they're doing opposites here. You got one purple guy and one red guy on each team. I think it's kind of interesting. It's like this match is going to be so interesting because you've got all kinds of styles here. You got high flying, you've got professional fighter style, you've got the Poroso strong style of Guerrero Azteca. It's going to be an interesting, interesting match. The what style? Poroso. What, what does that mean? It's the strong style. It's like Mexican strong style. It's something that he adheres to. He's a bruiser. I gotcha. I don't think I could say that word three times in a row, but I gotcha. You know, Kid K, the UCW superhero, former UCW champion himself, an Ultra X champion as well. He was actually the Ultra X champion when I came into this company. Guerrero Azteca, former uh, UCW champion. And then we've got Bronson, who is a former Cruiserweight champion. Manny Money Fresh has yet to have his first title here in UCW Zero. But you know what? This kid keeps coming to training. Who knows? He just might have something strapped around his waist besides a fanny pack. <laughs> that is correct. You know... This Bronson intrigues me. I, I understand he's off his medication, what? and he has been for a while. Off but his you, medication? Yes. But you know what? People are going to find out that there is a method to his madness. Are you? Did you use the word method on purpose? Are you suggesting something with your subtle words? Yes, I am. Because I will have you know, sir, that we drug test at UCW Zero, and he is clean. He is clean, but he is a little off. I... I, I am I apologize, ladies and gentlemen, for what MK is suggesting. Oh my oh, gosh! See, that's what I was talking about. That strong style. Whoa! Wow. Take a look at that. Kid K. Shoulder block. It looks like it looks like Guerrero is in a little bit of uh, shock here. I don't think he expected that fast start. Well, and you know what? That's why they call him the UCW superhero. Oh! He just has those bouts of super strength as Guerrero Azteca takes out his own tag team partner. Well, see, and that's what you see when you have these type of matches where people aren't used to working with each other. They don't have the chemistry. They don't have the feel. And that's what you see. Tag made from uh, Kid K to Manny Money Fresh. Here we go now. Guerrero Azteca off one side of the ropes to the other. Irish whip. Ducks the double clothesline. And then look at this. A distraction from Bronson. Yeah. Oh, big. That, that's a double clothesline from one man. That is powerful. You know, the thing that always amazes me about Aztec is his size. He is one big man. Uh, I'll definitely agree with you on that one. Uh-oh, look at this. Oh, oh my, my goodness. Gosh. Pinfall here, two. Only able to get a two count. Manny Money Fresh probably lost his breath on that one. Though. You were asking me what Poderoso means? Yeah, I was actually about That's to ask what you that again. Is. That's what that is. That's what that is. Poderoso? Poro Oso. Pero Oso. A, a Strong style. I, I think if you literally took that word apart, like Pero is dog, right? I'm pretty Poro. sure I'm pretty I'm, I'm pretty sure that Oso is I. It's the eye of the dog style. Is that what that means? No, I uh. think that it I think that your I was mispronouncing it and you're misinterpreting. Well, you know what? I took four years of Spanish. How many years did you take? That's what I thought. Moving on. Bronson taking advantage here in the corner. Oh, look at this. Beautiful execution right there from Bronson. The great thing is, is that you've got two high flyers on each team. Right? you got Bronson. Oh, look at that disrespect from Bronson to Kid K. Now, I understand that Bronson's, like, reason for this whole thing is so that he can collect another mask. He wants Kid Cade's mask. Really? That's why he wears the mask. He collects them like scalps or something. You were able to figure this out in the 20 minutes that you've been on the air? Well, I did read a little bit of the. How mind. long have you has how long has it been known that Paco you were going to replace Paco? Why wasn't I told about this? Well, we didn't think that you needed to know. It was a need to know basis, oh, and you didn't need to know. I needed to know, trust me. But Manny Money Fresh here on the offense. Look at this. Goes under Bronson right there. Uh oh, Bronson Locked with the attempted it. hip toss. There's a big hip toss right there from Manny Money Fresh. Unbelievable stuff right there. This kid's lost weight, too. I'd like to point that out as well. Yeah, he's been training hard. Manny Money Fresh is just a professional fighter. That's what he is. And you know what? A beautiful eye rake right there by Bronson. Some people say it's illegal. I just think it's a great strategy. Well, like Bronson, I guess you got to do what you got to do to uh, win the match. I don't have to like it, but it seems to be effective. Now, what is this weird thing about collecting masks you were talking about? He does collect masks like scalps. He wants to... It's, 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 it's a show of how he is 
is beating people. It's how he how he measures himself, I suppose. Okay, well, I don't know about that, but I mean, I, you know what? I I think you're just making up stories. I don't think Bronson's ever been on medication. You're, you're who hired this guy? Crying out loud! Uh oh, here you go. Here's there something go. that you only see in UCW Zero. This is the big thunder chop from Guerrero Azteca. Look at this, off one set of ropes, off of the other. Here goes. Shh, shh, shh. Oh, oh, big thunder Oh my thunder goodness! Shot. Did you hear that? The view, I, I, the viewers at home. I hope the I hope the mics picked that up. That was amazing. You know what? It's cold weather outside right now, but believe it or not, there's a thunderstorm courtesy of Guerrero Azteca. That's right. Now look at this. He goes smart. He goes into the ground and pound right now. Guerrero. This is this is something that wears you down. This is something that where it limits your breath. It is something that can really take it out of you. Definitely agree with you on that one. Guerrero Azteca, one of the stronger guys on the roster. Not many people are able to uh, get out of this maneuver. Now Kid K doing his best as he can for his tag team partner. Not much you can do when you're outside of the, you're not the league. Man, oh man. Well, that's one way to get out of that, and that's one way to fall. See, it's punch, counter punch, move, counter move here. Clearly, Azteca has the uh, advantage in uh, years in the ring. Did you just use a PlayStation cheat code? What's the next one? A, B, A, B, left, right, up, down! Oh, oh my, my gosh. goodness! Guerrero Azteca stands at 6'5. Bronson was literally six and a half feet in the air, plus some. Unbelievable. I wonder how Manny's lungs feel right oh, now. Oh, Bronson sucker punching Kid Cade. Probably the same as Cade's face. What's interesting to me is Kid Cade is doing his best to help his partner out, but it's not working. You've got to stay on the apron. You've got to stay and be patient. With a punt like that, Bronson could be a place kicker for the Eagles. <laughs> not that I'm suggesting the Eagles need a kicker, mind you. Uh -oh. oh, Manny Money Azteca Fresh. playing to the crowd and got caught. And Manny Money Fresh is coming back here, MK. It sure looks like it. Well, since you, since you did so much research, what do you know about this kid? Which one? Manny Money Fresh? No, well, yeah, that's the one I meant, not the actual guy who has kid in his name. <laughs> Manny Money Fresh trains hard. He, um has been around for about a year and a half now. Oh, has it been that long? Yes. Seems like forever. And here comes Kid K. And here we go now, strikes and back between these two. This would be a great one-on-one -on -one contest, which we saw just wow. two weeks ago. You know, it's hard to believe that these guys haven't tagged together before, because that was a great move. Shining Followed up wizard. by an Enzo Geary. And a three count, wow. Oh my goodness. Unbelievable. I, I think the reason why they won that match is they looked more coordinated. They looked like they had been practicing together and were more about the win, and, and Guerrero Aztec and Bronson were more about just beating up their opponents. Well, they were not coordinated. Well, you know what? I will say, you know, sometimes being selfish, you can still win a match, and that's what Bronson is, especially when you're the better of the two. I can completely understand where Bronson was coming from with that. We've got more to come here on UCW Zero. Stay tuned. called out by the Deacon of Doom. I understand this is the first title that Joey Salvatore has held, and he's told me in the back that he loves it because it humbled and shut up the Deacon. 
And it's probably going to be the last one. I mean, I don't know if you've watched this kid's matches, but he's not exactly the most impressive guy on our roster. Well, I'll tell you something. He was good enough to get that belt. Let's see if he's good enough to defend it successfully right here. You know what? I mean, anyone can have luck. I mean, there are people who win the lottery. You think that involves any skill? You know, I'm excited about this match, though. I, I really am. You've got, you've got. Uh, now, this isn't an official UCW Zero title. Let's let, let's get the that straight for the viewers at home. This is something that Deacon kind of uh, made up himself. Is that not correct? Uh, well, you got it exactly right. It was something that he took, and it was his own pride and joy. Well, well, Deacon is a deacon, and so he is asking for a prayer. Uh. But he's just using it's a cheap. <laughs> this is a cheap ploy. Oh. This is terrible. This is strategy. There is, there is a special place in hell for someone who uses the Lord to get over in a wrestling match. I don't think you know quite what you're talking about. I mean, you do all this backstage research, but I don't see anywhere where, you know, cheating in a wrestling match defines hell. My gosh. Let's be over dramatic, why don't we? You know what? I got to say something. That uh, Deacon is a seasoned veteran and Joey's the young kid. Yep. So I don't know if, if the talent of, of uh, Joey Salvatore can overcome the experience. What do you think? Well, you know what? I mean, the Deacon got a really late start into this business. I mean, anyone could tell you that. It was just one of those things that he had to do. And you know what? He's made, been able to make a successful career out of it here in the UCW Zero. But you know what? He is nothing without that Bible Belt Championship. So I think he's going to do everything in his power to get that back. At the same time, you know what? If Joey, Al or, uh, Joey Salvatore really wants it, then he's going to take it too. Uh-oh, oh, here we see, go. There we go. You know, the one thing about being a KG veteran is you sometimes can be overconfident, and I think we saw it right there. Being a what? Overconfident and a no. KG veteran. What, what, that, what is a KG veteran? Well, you're crafty, you're cagey, you think, you try and uh, skirt around the rules, just like he did when he did the prayer thing to distract the referee. I still don't know what you mean by cagey. I mean, we have a cage show in November, but I don't, what? What is that? Well, I know you did go to Judge Memorial High School, as did I. Whoa. But I'm a little disappointed with your education. Someone's been doing some research. That's what, were you, were you a stat guy before this? Yes, I was. Oh, sir. there you go. I can tell. But look at this now. Joey Salvatore on the offense here. And the Deacon. Oh, man. Now, Joey should be jumping on him right now. Joey should not be waiting. He should be jumping and, and taking advantage of this opportunity. He has Deacon stunned. Welcome to the inexperience factor that is Joey Salvatore. Oh, that's terrible. See, I do, not, oh, I do not understand why these guys can't just do it on their own talent and their own merits. Why they have to have someone outside to interfere in these matches? You ever play Mario Kart? Yes. Isn't Mario Kart just boring without turtle shells and bananas and bombs and mushrooms? Yes, but this is an athletic competition, not a cheat fest or a video game. All I'm saying is that if I have mushrooms, I'm going to use those every single time. Well, sometimes your commentating sounds like you have been on mushrooms. Well, hey, oh, what is with you and drug references? My gosh. Here we go now, the Deacon of Doom. Taking oh. that big elbow right there to Joey Salvatore. Now he's got till the count of five to let him out of the corner, and he's taking advantage of every second of that count. You know, I don't like this guy defending that title over in Italy. I just that that's that's an American title. Yes, but he's defending it in Italy, and he if if Deacon doesn't like it, if you don't like it, then don't put it up. Two count right there as well. And oh. there's no timeouts in wrestling. Yeah. Oh. Oh, and as always, have we seen tonight the eye rake? You know what? I mean, Joey, can someone get Joey a hair tie? Crying out loud. I mean, that kid just has so many weaknesses when it comes to that kind of stuff. His hair, I bet if someone cut his hair, he'd win a couple matches. You know, that suplex looked like it came from the heavens above. I mean, Deacon is a tall guy. Now, see, that's the overconfidence that I'm talking about. He did the one finger cover. He probably could have ended the match and got his Bible belt, but he wants to divvy out some punishment. I definitely agree with you on that one. I mean, you know, Joey Salvatore really made the Deacon look like a fool. I mean, he's done that twice now. 
You know, I mean, at, at our cage show back in November, he did make the Deacon look like a fool, despite the fact that I believe Deacon came out the victor in that contest. But then when Joey won that Bible belt, I mean, that was just insult to injury. So do you think uh, this is more personal than it is about the title? If I stole your sunglasses and I wore your sunglasses over in Italy, how would you feel about that? It would be personal. It would be personal, exactly. The Deacon... You know, you know, pulling that hair. One, maybe thing that, one thing that's interesting here is uh, God gave Deacon that haircut. Joey really? Salvatore, he has the hair. That's a disadvantage as we've seen. Yeah, well, you know what? I think that Deacon thinks, thinks strategically, and it, it's not necessarily that he thinks about technical wrestling or chain wrestling or things like that, but he thinks about strategies where he observes his opponent and their weaknesses, and he takes full advantage with Joey Salvatore with a neck breaker right nice there. Nice reversal. He's staying in there. Uh-oh. You, you know, the one thing about defending the title in Italy is it gave him experience, and that elbow was beautiful. You know, I mean, there's... There's so many famous Italian wrestlers that I, that I can think of. Right. I just won't mention them because it's out of respect. And copyright violations. Well, that too. Here's a pinfall. One. Two. Oh, well, oh, what is, oh, the Dark Angel distracting Joey Salvatore. And look at this now. Uh-oh. I'm surprised that wasn't a disqualification right there. But look at this. Oh. See, here's that veteran experience. The Deacon, the Deacon's got his belt back. Hallelujah. And that was veteran experience against inexperience. There were several times during that match where Joey had him beat, but he just couldn't get over the mental factor, couldn't get over the experience factor. Unbelievable. Great stuff right there from the Deacon of Doom and the Dark Angel. Joey Salvatore, tonight was just not your night. For tonight's episode of the best wrestling in the state of Utah, it's the Ultra, or excuse me, yes, the Ultra Championship Wrestling Tag Team Titles on the line. Martin Casaus and Derek Gennetti, the challengers. MK, I know you've done some research, so I'll let you talk at this point. I'll tell you what, this match excites me. This match is pay-per-view quality. I am so honored and excited to be here to call this. The viewers at home are going to be in for a real treat. You've got two veterans who have been here in UCW Zero since they started against the American Pit Bulls for the title. You got that exactly right. Martin Casales, a former WWE Tough Enough star. He's been scouted by many organizations throughout the years. He's currently the ACW champion out in Colorado right now. So we've got a lot of great stuff and a lot of great talent right here in the ring. Derek Gennetti, I believe, could have gone far in his career, but he's decided to be more humble and stay here in the great state of Utah. Great choice by Derek Gennetti, I will say that much. Martin Cassell's wearing Tyler Centron shorts. Yeah, I, I was kind of confused about that one. I guess we'll find that find out what that's all about. You know, Martin Casals checks out Lely D's butt so much, you'd think that those two would be dating or something. The American Pitbulls, the Captain Craig Stevens, and the Pitbull, Jason Jackson. Go ahead, MK, let's hear your rundown. Well, I'll tell you something. Uh, Jason Jackson told me in the back that he is so excited for this match because it's all about competition. They want the best. They don't want just a bunch of stiffs. They want the best. Oh, and look, look at this. Look at this, because Paco's not here, you get to be the one to hold the belt. Isn't that precious? Well, you know what? It's all about respect. 
It's all about that. And these guys are athletes. It's all about respect. It's all about competition. And that's what they want, the best competition. You know what? I, w I will agree with you. These guys are very athletic. But there's a lot of things that I could say, but I'm not going to say because I've said it before. I'll tell you, the folks at home are really in for a treat. What you'll see here in this match, ladies and gentlemen, is that this is a very divided crowd when it comes to these two. Look at this. We got a thumb war, and then we also got rock, paper, scissors going on. It looks like Derek Gennetti wins the thumb war. And it looks like Jason Jackson will be in for the American Pitbulls. Now, I understand the last time they were in the ring, they basically beat each other. It was a terrible, ah, oh, I couldn't believe it. You know, Jack Trades was put in a bad position, and it was just, it was it ended up being a double pinfall. It was just, ah, I, that's all I can say. But this is a two out of three falls match, ladies and gentlemen. So you have to get two falls in order to win the tag team titles. We, we, this could go one and one, or this could just be two, and that's it. You know, it's interesting. It's going old school. It's going a little bit of uh, lucha. That's what I think the crowd wants. That's what I think that uh, is interesting here uh, in UCW Zero. Oh, nice takedown. Great takedown right there by the veteran Derek Gennetti. Derek Gennetti has the most experience out of anyone in this ring. In fact, if you combine the amount of years that Derek Gennetti and Martin Casals have together as veterans, it's at least five times more than the American Pitbulls, minimum. That is amazing here, and that's what kind of intrigued me about last week, um, that it was such a tough match. Uh-oh. Look at this now, Derek Gennetti, great defense right there, off the top, or off the middle rope. Great match there, two, oh, only a one count. Can you imagine that body coming full force at you and landing on top of you? Yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have a good time if that's what you're asking. Oh, man. Big back elbow right there by Jason Jackson. Kai I got the idea from Gennetti and uh, used it to his advantage. Man, how long have you been doing research on this? Quite a while. I gotta say, I mean, you're better with that stuff than Paco ever was. Here we go now. Oh, look at this. Oh, big, big right there. Hip toss. Double elbow right there by these two. Pinfall by Casals. And Captain Craig Stevens won't even let them get a one count. Well, see, and that's what you see when you have tag teams that work together. They work as a team. They work everything out. And you just saw that both teams have worked together quite a bit. Ooh, big drop kick. Big, big drop kick by Martin Casales. Yep, what Martin is known for is his big drop kicks, that's for sure. Here we go now. Irish whip, Jason Jackson, oh, on the counter right there. Big reaction right there by Casales. That definitely took him off his game. Tag made to the captain, Craig Stevens. Irish whip from one side of the ring to the other. And look at this. Oh, watch. This is vintage American pit bulls right here. Drop kick of his own from the captain, Craig Beautiful. Stevens. Beautiful move, something that is a lost art is the combination moves in tag team wrestling. Definitely got to agree with you on that one. The American Pitbull is still on the advantage as Casals throws Captain Craig Stevens, but look at this. Reverse, no, nope, not quite. What's the captain going to do here? Oh, this is just great technical wrestling that we're seeing right here, and a big backbreaker right there. Now it looks like we might get one fall here. Now Casals has been in there for quite a while. Yeah, I definitely got to agree with you. And you know what? That's a thing. That's a debate that myself and the Mochi uh, have had a, a millions of times. Is it better to do quick tags so that you always have one fresh man in? Or is it good for one guy to be in there for one length of time and then have the other guy come in fresh, 100% fresh, no doubt about it? Well, I think it just depends on the individuals here. Very close to getting a pinfall right there. Now, for those of you at home who don't know how a two out of three falls match works, basically what can happen is that one team can get one pinfall, and that'll be one fall in their favor. However, the match is not over until one team gets two pinfalls. So, for example, if the American Pitbulls get two pinfalls in a row, the match is over and they retain the titles. But let's say that Casals and Derek, oh, there's a two count right there. Let's say that Casals and Gennetti get one pinfall, and then the American Pitbulls get the other. It's basically a, southern, uh, a sudden death scenario. Casawas has got to tag Janetti in. He is getting too beaten up in there. I'm telling you, he is close to going. 
Oh, and and Martin Casals with it with trying to get those chops back, but it's just not quite the right angle. Oh, look at this. What do we got here? Irish whip, reverse Irish whip. Oh, big punch right there. Big clothesline by Casals. Casals with a little bit of fire coming back here. You know, up until that point, the American pit bulls were doing a very good job of cutting off the ring. But even now, look, he's still in their corner. Yep, you definitely got that right. And look at this. Oh, my gosh. And Martin Casals just ducked Jason Jackson. I'll tell you what, there's all kinds of counter moves. Nothing better than the duck. Well, you know what? That's definitely one way to go about it for sure. Oh, big chop right I there. I can't Kisaus. understand why Casawas is continuing his offensive maneuvers and doesn't tag in Janetti, who appears to be fresh on the outside. He's got to be tired. How long have you been a fan of professional wrestling? My whole life. Your whole life. What is one of the biggest things ever, just not just in professional wrestling, but any industry? One of the biggest things? Yeah. You have no idea where I'm going with this, do you? No. Ego. There ego, you go, true. Ego is one ego. of the biggest things. And although Casals is well liked by the crowd, there's a lot of pride and a big ego. So he'll tag in Janetti when he's good and ready, which he already did about five minutes ago in the middle of my rant. But that's not the point. No, you are right. It could be his ego. But Janetti doing a good job here and a lot of chops that are wearing down the captain. You know what? I haven't gotten a chance to do this, so I'm going to do it right now. Things are getting choppy here at UCW Zero. There you go. Derek Janetti with some of the worst chops, and when I mean that, I mean the most painful. Yes, you can hear them all over. But you know what? I will say this. It's one thing if your chop is loud, but the ones that aren't loud, they're just more like a thud, those yep. are the worst. Yep, that thud is like more of a punch, like that one right there. I don't know if the people at home could hear that concussion of the boom of his chest. It's definitely, it, it, it even, oh, oh wow. That was amazing. That actually caught the captain in his forehead. You know what, though? If you're going to cause some damage, why not cause some damage there? Well, we were talking about the best maneuver is the duck, just like that. If you duck, you better duck. Well, and Captain Craig Stevens anxious to get out of there. Jason Jackson telling Derek Janetti exactly what he thinks of him. And look at this. Jason Jackson, I love the amount of energy. He's just a fire, my brother. You know, Jason Jackson is just such a competitor. He does everything 110% and he goes 100 Oh! Counter maneuver. What a big neck breaker. For those of you who, oh wow, there you go. That's the first fall. Now let me remind you, the match is not over. That is just like one point. Well, and here we go, it could be over now. You keep going. I tell you what, for those of you who are watching this, if you didn't watch our episode about two weeks ago, what you can definitely see in that episode is when Martin Casals countered Jason Jackson with a big drop kick to his back. It was brutal. Oh, my gosh. I think Martin Casals just has Jason Jackson's card. You know, it sure looks like it. And I'll tell you what, now it's it's the team of Janetti and Casals that are doing the good job of cutting off the ring, keeping Jason Jackson in their corner or in the middle of the ring and dishing out the punishment. I will say this is the closest that the American Pitbulls have ever come to losing the tag team titles. This is their first reign as tag team champions. Uh-oh, and look at this here. Jason Jackson back on the offense now. Big punches to the head of Janetti. What do we got here? Oh, looks like Janetti going to be able to count. Oh, Inziguri. Inziguri to the back Beautiful of the head. Beautiful counter. Beautiful counter. We might have a fall here. But oh. You know, I should have let you say that. You like saying Inziguri. Well, and I, I don't know if I saw a tag. And you know what, referee Jack Trades didn't see one either. Who is the legal man in the ring right now? I, I thought it was Janetti. I, I, I think so, but I'm not sure if they didn't catch that. Do you think we might have another double pinfall? I oh, I hope not. Although if, if we did, what would end up happening was that it would technically be a two to one because it's currently one to zero, which would mean that if there was a double pin, Casals and Janetti would become the new tag team champions. Now, I want to also say that this two out of three falls is much different than something you would see in Lucha Libre. In Lucha Libre, after a fall, they actually reset and start almost like a new match. Yep. Here, it's more gauntlet style, where you get the fall, you just keep going. So you could almost get two falls back to back. You're 100% correct. You know, it's almost... It's almost kind of like in hockey, where hockey has three periods, you know? That's just kind of how it is. You go, you take a break, you do your research a little bit, you drink some water, maybe you drink something else like a Gatorade, and then you go back to work. 
It's like a coffee break, except, you know, not as cool. There you go. Ooh, big boot by Janetti. Derek Janetti. Man, you know what? I got to tell you. Derek Janetti is one tough athlete, and you know what? He's probably the best in shape on, when it comes to this roster. Now, I'm not afraid to say that. You know, Derek Janetti, he's got a very steady diet every single time for dinner. He has a chicken breast and broccoli, and I got to tell you, if it meant that I looked like that, I'd heavily consider that diet as well. Oh, my goodness. Look what we have here. Oh, Big DDT! Tornado DDT! You called it right, my friend. Holy cow. Now, let me ask you something. If neither one of them gets up, what happens? It's one-to-one. One, it's two-to-one then. All right. Well, you know what? Exactly. I think there's a lot of things that are in the favor of Derek Kennedy and Martin Casals. And I think that's why it's very important to get that first pinfall because then you're not behind at all. You could win it at any point, and then you go home, you take those tag team titles home. I got to tell you something. It's hard to be professional. It's hard to be um, uh, uh, calm when you're seeing such a wonderful match. I mean, this is exciting stuff. This is something that you only get here at UCW Zero. Oh, wow. Well, and uh oh, look at this top rope. Big shoulder tackle right there by the captain, Craig Stevens, on Martin Casals. Oh, oh, my God. And a fall away German. Look at this. Let's make it and two while we're at one. it. Now you gotta understand, he out, you know, Kasawa's engineer outweigh the captain by quite a bit. Yeah, that's not very American of the captain either. Well, they do call it a German. Uh oh, look at this! No way! Oh, it's one to one now. Come on! Oh, he's gonna go for the other one, two, three. Oh, wow. what do you think there? Do you think if the referee was paying attention, he could have had the second, uh, another fall? Wait, you mean a referee missed something? No, I think he's the most qualified out of any referee I've ever met. We'll be right back here at UCW Zero. Stay tuned for the rest of our main event. BR Ultra Championship Wrestling Zero, Utah's best live pro wrestling action in Salt Lake City, Utah at the UCW Training Center, 47 South Orange Street. Tickets are $10 for general admission and $3 for kids six and under. Doors open at 6 p.m. and bell time is 6.30 p.m. For more information, go to www.ucw-0.com or call 801-699-7977. And remember, do not try this at home. We are trained professionals, leave it to us. We are Ultra Championship Wrestling Zero. Motivational pain. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. Whoa! Announcer's table. Oh, I can't geez. believe I just saw that. I can't believe they hit our camera. Come on, guys. We worked hard at that angle. Did you see that? I heard Janetti's head bounce off the concrete. Yeah, and you know what? If I don't look as pretty because of that, I'm going to be very upset. This is something that you can only see on this show. Oh, this no, is no, 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 no. MK, you got to look out for this. Hang on now. Oh, my goodness. Martin Casales goes airborne. Hey, you're an idiot. That is amazing. That is amazing, folks. I don't know if the viewers at home can see what just happened, but he got in the air and landed on his opponents. He is throwing the pit bull, Jason Jackson, in. He's checking on his tag team partner right now, and it looks like the captain is still out of it. You know what? These crowd is a bunch of morons yelling, that was awesome. They could have they could have hurt our table and our very expensive equipment. You know what? It would have been worth it. This is amazing. This is something that is vintage UCW Zero. This is something that you won't see anywhere else. This is something that you will only see on this show or if you come to this arena. Derek Janetti and Jason Jackson. Derek Janetti not going to let Jason Jackson suplex him off the top rope. Look at this. Martin Casals now into the... Uh-oh. Oh, no. This is going to be big. This is going to be bad. Oh, oh my, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Can you believe that? That is called... High flying and heavy. Craig Stevens is unconscious outside the ring. Derek Giannetti needs to pin Jason Jackson right now. The referee counting. This is amazing. This is the, the 
The crowd is chanting, this is awesome, and this is awesome. You and I might have differences, but I think we can agree on this thing. No, I'll agree with it being awesome as long as it's in the ring, not right here, and not going to go through my table for crying out loud. And this right now is amazing because the count is now up to six. One or both of them have to get up or this match is over and another double pinfall. Oh my gosh. I, I don't think our fans could bear. You want to talk about being a tease. Jason Jackson with the tag to the Captain Craig Stevens. Derek Janetti's not going to make a tag. But look at this. Big oh. double axe handle. Another one while we're another at it. One. Irish whip from Derek Janetti, reversed by Craig Stevens. What are we going to see? Oh, oh big my one. goodness. Where is he getting this energy from? You know what? Sometimes you just get that motivation from the crowd. Here we go. Irish whip. Derek Janetti. Oh, no. Look at this. The captain's A trying to end this. Hook. No countered. Oh, here we go. Whoa. Look at this. Oh, my gosh. The captain's going to try for that new submission move. He, he tried this successfully about oh, he's a trying month to ago. Do the sharpshooter right here. That's a modified sharpshooter. Holy cow. Now, this is something that you just can't train for. You hope you're limber enough. You hope oh! oh, and a boot to the head. Look at this now. Casals with that kick to the now, back. Now, is he of the, the legal man in? No, he's not. A double underhook spinning neck breaker. Who is the legal man in? Oh, and a spinning power bomb. Well, it's definitely not Jason Jackson. It's definitely not Martin Casals. I don't know what Jason Jackson is doing. Why is he taking out all his anger? He should be taking it out on Derek Gennetti. I mean, Gennetti's the legal man. Reverie Jack Trades is doing nothing to stop this. Oh, geez, you know what? I'll I can't even what. speak. Oh, and he tried his signature elbow move and missed. That's what they mean by high risk. High flying, but risky. Derek Gennetti now about to take Jason Jackson to a dark, dark place. Uh-oh, look at this now. Well, and, and the double captain, underhook, there it is. The captain successfully. Oh, they're going to get the pin here. Two. Oh, he was a little slow on jumping on top of Janetti there. A little bit of hesitation. Now, one second. Only a two count right there. The captain, Craig Stevens, is going to the top rope. We don't see him go to the top rope often. Let's see what happens here. A big salute and nobody oh! home. Once again, that's why they call it high risk. High flying, but very risky. You know what, Derek Janetti's 11 years of experience getting put to work right here, right now. Janetti, take us home, baby. Take those tag titles home. That's what's going to happen right now. Get the pin, Derek. Get the pin. One, two. He got a new tag team champion. New tag team champions. You folks at home have just witnessed history. Wow. That was something to see. That was something for the ages. And you know what's the best thing about it? What? It got captured for television so the folks at home can see it. After a few attempts of trying, Derek Janetti and Martin Casals have beat the American Pitbulls. The American Pitbulls were on an impressive, I believe it's been six months now, it's been an impressive six-month reign. But Derek Janetti and Martin Casals, way too much for them at this point. I'll tell you something, size and experience seem to want, win over in the match today. No doubt about that. I can guarantee you that the American Pitbulls, after having such a long reign, they're not going to be finished with this one by a long shot. Oh, no. All you got to do is go in the back, think about the things you did wrong, you watch, you watch the film and improve on things. And I really think that the American Pitbulls are still going to be a force. I don't think this is going to affect them after tonight. Well, this crowd is on their feet here for Martin Casals and Derek Janetti. For all of us here at UCW Zero, I'm Josh Damian. There's I'm MK. Yeah, that new guy sitting next to me. You can check us out on www.ucwzero.com.